All right, thanks a lot for introducing me. Um, yeah, I probably don't have to add much, um, but I just want to mention that um, I've been involved in uh, curriculum development, um, mostly focusing on interdisciplinary um, outreach kind of activities with other departments and at different career stages of uh, people. For example, this is for postdoctoral scholars often ignored when coming to education because um, as we all know, they're always in their labs and they don't have much time to do anything else besides their own experiments and publish and apply for grants and stuff. So I started developing this curriculum while I was myself a postdoc. And um, that was the first initiative um, that a postdoc had ever taken at the university to develop a curriculum for postdocs. So it's kind of like a peer feedback that I got that um, postdocs were interested in coding, programming, and data science, but like they didn't have access to a lot of resources. So anything they picked up was from blog posts and YouTube videos very unstructured and no one to guide them and advise them on how to proceed. Um, so I took it upon myself to try and develop this curriculum. I'm no longer there at the university where I did this, but the program continues. Other people have taken it up and I'm very happy that it still continues even after I left. Right, so my motivation was to introduce data science to other STEM disciplines. A lot of STEM disciplines nowadays use a lot of modeling and uh, machine learning and AI applications in their domains. And as I said, they don't have a structured way to learn and understand these concepts through a course or something of that sort. Also, um, Data science is now a big thing and it's being introduced at the undergrad level at various universities. However, there are people at advanced stages of their career, for example, postdocs, who did not have the opportunity while they were undergrads to be exposed to concepts in data science. Same goes for a lot of faculty members as well in different STEM disciplines. Also, um, I was at a university where it was focused on biology and medicine. So I realized that there's a growing use of machine learning, AI and data science in biology and medicine, like I was involved in. And people on the biology side with expertise in biology and medicine, they did not have the training or background to even convey what they were trying to do to a machine learning expert like myself. So they were fumbling and they could not translate the concepts in biology and medicine to the concepts in data science. Also, like I said, there aren't many entry-level courses tailor-made for specific STEM disciplines. In this case, biology and medicine, we could have them tailor-made for every department if possible, if we have the workforce to do that. So this was a course offered at uh, UT Health, which is the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. It was offered by the Office of Postdoctoral Affairs, and they already have a certificate training program. So it was offered as a part of that program. And we had a lot of support from the Postdoc Association over there. So while developing the curriculum, I focused on certain pedagogical methods or approaches. For example, instead of simply teaching coding and data science, I had a particular focus on developing computational thinking skills. So once a person develops computational thinking skills, they can clearly express themselves in terms of algorithms or flowcharts to another professional, and that way, the communication gets easier. I also focused on experiential learning, I used data sets from the biosciences in my course. There was also opportunities for collaborative learning. 
um, because I used paired programming sessions. You know, students, not students, but postdocs were paired and asked to do programming assignments or exercises. There was also focus on team-based learning because of team projects. And there were think pair share sessions to encourage peer-to-peer -peer learning. So the goals and objectives of this course was to introduce researchers to a programming language or software. And given the nature of data science, the course was offered both in Python and R at different points of time. And another goal was to introduce very broad categories of problems such as classification, regression, clustering, exploratory analysis, and so on. Um, just to give them a flavor of the different kinds of uh, problems in data science that you know, they can use in their own research. So the goal is of course to use these methods in their own research if possible. Um, we also encouraged um, the, the postdocs attending to try to translate their own research problems in their domains to data science problems like regression, which is of course very common or clustering or some sorts of um, such as uh, uh, dimensionality reduction and so on. Um, and also the goal was to do experiential learning through the use of data sets that they're familiar with and improve learning outcomes through active learning by using an active involvement of the postdocs in the classroom setup. The curriculum was split into two broad segments. The first one was coding, of course, because most of them do not have an experience in coding. And the second part was a bit technical on the data science side with some machine learning concepts being taught. The, the coding segment consisted of either Python or R. There were demos and examples in the class and there were pair programming exercises, both in and out of class. Um, using optional homework assignments. Now we have to keep in mind these are postdocs, so we cannot force them to spend time outside of class doing this, but uh, from personal experience, most of them actually did the homework assignments. So I also focused on um, common data structures, loops, functions, and how to use existing libraries, packages, or APIs to solve their problems. And further, um, the use of data frames comes in particularly handy um, in most cases and had some data wranglings that was also covered. The data science segment of the curriculum started with data visualization, um, effective visualization techniques, how to make plots look better and um, convey the information in a suitable manner. Um, we covered exploratory data analysis then we also covered some popular algorithms for clustering, classification, and regression, their shortcomings, and how they can use different APIs to apply these for their own data. Um, there were several in-class examples using bioscience data sets and also take-home exercises. There were think pair share sessions where um, the postdocs were asked to talk about their own research data sets and how they can come up with uh, problems that they can solve using data science methods. Another thing that I incorporated was a floating lecture. So the last lecture session was a floating lecture where they could actually request me to do a certain topic um, that they wanted covered. For example, I got a lot of requests for PCA um, supposedly that's pretty popular in the biosciences. Um, I got requests for doing heat maps, by clustering and things like that. And that's something which postdocs particularly appreciated because that covered some topics that um, they'd heard about, they'd used, but they did not know much about. So uh, the, the only way to evaluate um, over here was the final project um, because we focused on experiential learning. So I handcrafted teams basically using people from different departments, <laughs> backgrounds, genders, and ethnicities. And they were encouraged to meet once every week outside of class time to discuss and practice. 
And they had to use a data set from their own lab, from their own research um, to complete the project. They had to frame their data science objectives or problem um, using that data set. And they required a lot of help from me, which um, I was happy to do. And the project usually um, comprised four components, exploratory data analysis, classification, regression, and clustering. And towards the end of the course, the last day of the class, they presented um, their findings to the others in the class. And we had a very healthy discussion on what things could be done and what was not correct and what was correct, what could be done in future and so on. So we evaluated the effectiveness of the scores through a survey questionnaire. And um, this questionnaire had a four point Likert scale, uh, strongly disagree, disagree, agree, and strongly agree. Um, and mostly people were very appreciative of the course in a lot of ways. Um, and everyone found that the course supplemented their laboratory training and research, question C over here. And they found the course useful as a good use of their time outside of the lab, which is particularly difficult to do for postdocs. And everyone said that their postdoc mentor was also supportive of uh, participating in this course. And actually um, for a few months when after the pandemic started, we had to move the course to an online uh, session. And it uh, seemed it did impact learning for a few, but um, mostly students, uh, the postdocs were okay uh, moving to an online platform. Right, finally, um, some lesson, lessons learned from this experience. Uh, firstly, there's a lot of time constraints for postdoctoral researchers, as everyone knows, I've been one myself, and taking time out of the lab to, to learn something useful that they can use back in their own lab is very much appreciated. Um, assessment was a challenge because um, we cannot um, have like exams and such for postdocs. So there were optional homework exercises, which most of them actually did and the final project, which was very impressive, actually. Um, also, the use of domain-specific data sets and problems um, that uh, made the class more interactive and uh, more approachable for everyone. The floating lecture was very much appreciated. Um, framing of the final project did need a lot of help from my side um, and still needs a lot of help from the person who's the instructor right now. Um, we also tried introducing guest lectures, bringing in researchers and professors working in data science and machine learning, but this was not appreciated, which is an interesting thing to note. Um, the postdocs felt that it would, it would be better for them to you know, learn methods and learn APIs and libraries to do data science tasks for themselves, instead of bringing in professors who talked about you know, very high level stuff of what they're doing in their labs. So that did not help at all. Um, also towards the beginning of the course, um, a lot of them needed help with software installation. Um, it's good to have a TA if, if possible to do that uh, towards the beginning of the course. Uh, now there's a sister course um, to this called Statistics for Biomedical Researchers. Of course, um, didn't have time to cover stats. Um, along with coding and machine learning. So this is a sister course that was offered and which also was pretty popular. Thank you very much. If you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you for that. I am extra I really like this course. I'm a very um, I'm thinking back to my postdoc days and thinking this would have been a really good thing um, to have. So pretty impressive. So does anyone have any questions? I have questions, but I um, for Arco as well. Did did I miss it? But what was the time frame over which you implemented this? Like, I mean, uh, that you offered this for docs? Um, this was offered over a standard fourteen week semester, and um, 
the class time was one hour given the time constraints of postdocs, but I was um, having office hours and a lot of people dropped in and um, even outside of class, I kept receiving emails and it, it was actually well past one hour that the postdocs were spending on this course. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One hour per week, is that they would be? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's from the etherpad. Could you describe the background and training of the students in the class? Were they clinicians, scientists? What were the prerequisite background training you expected? I expected no background, like I interacted with them before offering this course and um, I expected no background at all. Coding was taught from scratch and uh, machine learning concepts were taught from scratch. They were provided also reading materials um, if they wanted to read further. So yeah, basically anyone with uh, no knowledge of coding or machine learning could take this course and um, hopefully learn something. Hmm. Any other questions? Did, were you able to, uh, was this material something that is open or is it something that's still taught at Rice or where is it still living? Um, I have the material with me. Um, it was taught at UT Health. Um, there's a new instructor who's made their own materials, um, but using the same framework and same goals and objectives. Nice. So, have you are you done, have you done it again? Where you are now? You done it at right? Um, unfortunately, no. I don't have the bandwidth at the moment to offer this again. This was uh, let me mention this was offered as a service. So it's not that I got paid for it or anything. Mm -hmm. This was offered as a service. So I, um, being a faculty now, I don't really have the bandwidth to do that anymore. Mm 